name is uh, James Arthur. I'm the founder and director of SEMI. You can find that at cemmi.org. Um, what is SEMI? So I'm filling in for somebody that canceled yesterday. Uh, excuse me if I'm a little rushed or scattered in this presentation. I stitched it together this morning. Um, so what is SEMI uh, is, a, is a good question. We are honestly still trying to figure that out ourselves. Um, so rather than getting right into why, I, or getting right into what, I thought I would begin with why is SEMI. Um, okay, so um, let's see, history. Back, um, Okay, back about 10 years ago, uh, or basically last year, I ended up having all this stuff. Uh, I had some speakers and computers and lighting equipment and a whole assortment of synthesizers and monitors and DJ mixers and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I asked myself uh, how this happened because um, I wasn't doing much with it other than storing it and dealing with it. Um, uh, when the internet sort of came into my life seriously about 10 years ago, uh, I sort of dropped this small local circle of people I was interacting with and I started, uh, I got into the, the rave scene and I uh, started dealing with folks on that end. Um, I'm sorry, as I try to switch from my notes to the slides, the, the, it's just not cooperating with me. So, um, today I would say I'd consider myself a local social entrepreneur. I like to build community. I like to get a bunch of people together to try to do things, collaborate, uh, interact. I find really amazing things happen when you get the right people together in a room. Um, and there's not enough of that. There's not enough of things like this where you get a bunch of random folks that may or may not interact together and, and try, to, try to make something happen. Um, so that's how I got into the throwing of events. I started throwing events in really random places like a farmhouse in Rhode Island or um, senior house at MIT. And it was a really interesting experience. We would have, uh, there were free events. We had free, um, free food, free music. Everybody came for free. And uh, it was an interesting kind of experience. Um, the whole techno shamanism thing really resonated with me at the time. Um, now these events did have some negative elements you might presume, but I consider it sort of just a, a byproduct of cost of doing business. Um, so. Um, the party to me was really important. Um, while a lot of people see parties and club events as kind of this sort of silly experience, um, a party to me is like the opposite of war. Uh, whereas a war is important, a party is important. When you have a war, you know, there's supposedly some serious need and that's why we send out people and risk lives and kill and all sorts of these horrible things. The opposite of war to me is, is a party. You could say peace, but you know, peace is this whole existential experience. Um, people would come to our events and on the simple end of the spectrum, they would 
you know, satisfy their baser instincts and they'd go home a little brighter and they would take that into their lives, into their work. Um, and on the good end of the spectrum, uh, electronic media artists would, would come together and they would collaborate, they would make interesting things happen and lots of other smaller communities started developing out of the community we were building. So, so by seeding these communities, we were seeding other communities and good things were happening. Um, so, as I was saying before, we had all these people, when it was a free event, it was actually really easy to get folks. We had uh, the VJs and the DJs and the sound equipment and all this stuff sort of just came together. And initially it seemed great. It was like, um, you know, almost providential or provincial. We, how, did, how did all this happen? Um, but then someone would spill a beer on somebody's speaker or there would be, um, there'd be an issue where something would get broken or, or somebody, you know, who said they were going to show up didn't. Um, and, you know, all these things sort of started emerging because we are all spending money to make this happen. So these free events started uh, costing us a lot more than, than anything. Um, so when... Um, again, I'm sorry for the technical slowdown. So we decided to charge for an event. Um, we were thinking like five bucks would help cover the cost of everything. And um, everyone would be happy because you could either pay five bucks and come into the event or you could volunteer. You know, if you didn't have five dollars, you could help set up or clean up or DJ or VJ or whatever. Um, but now that we were charging, uh, there was this presumption that we were making money. Um, so. You know, that was the, uh, once money entered the equation, everything got colored really poorly. Um, literally, uh, you know, phrases would be thrown around that we were making a fortune uh, off of these $5 events. So we had to raise our prices because the DJs wanted to get paid, the VJs wanted to get paid, the sound people wanted to get paid, everybody wanted to get paid. And possibly rightly so, but, um, you know, suddenly what was meant to be this sort of like, motivational, positive experience became a, an awkward, negative one. So the event we, once we realized we had to pay everybody, uh, this is a breakdown of an actual event. Um, we charged $12 a person, uh, 80 people showed up, we brought in $960. Once we paid everybody, the venue was 300 bucks, the DJs were $50, so they added up to about 200. Uh, the VJs, we paid $150 each because they're there all night and they whine if you don't get paid more. Um, food and water was 60 so we spent about $1,060. Uh, $1, There's an error, sorry. That's all right. Um, appreciate pointing out, though. Um, I'll reiterate that I threw this together this morning and I'm replacing somebody that backed out. Um, so anyway, generally it was, it was a loss. I mean, it was a loss before, but now it was a loss and everyone was like weird. You know, it went from being a positive experience plus loss to a weird kind of greedy experience. And all these people were actually walking away with a little bit of money, um, except us. And so we were kind of in the same boat, except now we were, we were money hungry promoters. And so we, we wanted to kind of kill that idea. Um, so plan B was I was going to buy a lot of this equipment. Um, while this may offend some VJs out there, uh, most people could care less if someone was actually doing the work or milk drop was on the screen. Um, so we, you know, we bought a projector, we bought a sound system, we bought some basic lighting things, and um, you know, and 
suddenly we had all this stuff. Um, so now I had all this stuff that I needed to worry about. Um, I had to maintain it, I had to store it, I had to worry about it. Um, you know, I realized I was going to need to insure it. And, you know, sort of at this point last year um, where I didn't know if it was worth it. You know, I didn't know uh, how much of a, the struggle was worth fighting anymore. Um, so, I went to a space in Cambridge last July um, with the hope that I could take all my stuff and set it up and set up a membership system where you could pay a nominal fee and become a member of this organization that and you could use all this stuff. So maybe you're really into DJing, but you know you're not going to want to dump a bunch of money into lighting. So we have all that. Or maybe you're a VJ and, and you need some trussing, or you you know you need a sound system to throw together some sort of interesting audio experience, and you don't have the money to, to rent professional equipment and hire the techs, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, really what this was becoming was sort of a, a new media library. We just wanted a new media equipment library. We wanted to make all of this stuff available to people that may not normally need it. Um, of all the pieces of equipment I had, I might use something once or twice a year, and the rest of the year it's just sort of sitting there. Um, so it, it just seemed kind of faulty, and I figured maybe we could apply the crowdsourcing model to um, to this you know, system of equipment. I could show people how to use it, and if it caught on, maybe people would get involved and throw some of their equipment into the mix. So, as I've been saying, semi's pronounced semi, like semi-circle. Um, we're in the middle of a branding change, so um, currently this, uh, it's a recursive meaning. It's the Semi-Electronic Media uh, Institute or Semi-Electronic Media Initiative, depending on who you talk to. Um, we're sort of in a beta state, still trying to balance some things out. Um, you can find us by going to semi.org, uh, but c3m1 and uh, .com and .org are we bought those before I came here, and um, we'll be using those soon. We today we have um, 20 members. These members are folks from their MIT graduates, and then there are some. We have a couple of DJs that perform in some local independent labels. Um, we have a couple of EJs, and we have uh, some other random folks. <laughs> We've taught 14 classes, all of them out of the Artisans Asylum. Um, some really interesting ones. Um, the first class we taught was last November, was just Intro to Music Theory, because we didn't know what we were doing. So we figured, let's just teach them some basic stuff, and music theory can apply almost anywhere into any software. Uh, from there, Overthrow Sound, um, we had somebody kick off and start teaching about um, it was mostly Ableton Live and, and sound synthesis. 8-bit um, sound design was another variation. Uh, introduction to programmable lighting. If any of you have seen the, the Light Bridge project that went on uh, on the Charles River Bridge, um, we have access to all those lights. Those are actually in our inventory. Um, and we did, a, we did an installation on the Greenway uh, in conjunction with Figment this past winter, and it was um, the Winter Lights Celebration. So we had the lights that were used in the bridge project uh, created a couple things down there, and our class was able to learn how to program and manipulate those lights, and people were hacking from them remotely and making stuff happen, so it was kind of neat. Um, boombox to go, a um, gentleman named Aurelio, um, took a file carrying box and figured out how to turn it into a boom box for like $55. So he, he taught some folks how to build that. Um, Overthrow Sound was taught again. Ableton Live, uh, there was so much interest in Ableton. Uh, and while a lot of people use it for music production, there's actually some interesting applications. Uh, the MIDI to DMX conversions and stuff are, are getting really simple to use. So. Uh, having something where you can stick up music and, and lighting has become a um, sort of a fun process. So we've been delving a lot more into Ableton and folks. Um, 
Power Electronics, that was a course where Nathan, um, he, he took some, basically the, the challenge was, you know, you have an item and you need an adapter. You can go to Radio Shack and drop 20 to 50 bucks into universal adapters, or you can just learn how to take apart adapters and rewire them to make stuff work. Um, so he showed us the value of power supplies and old computers, because there's usually hundreds of thousands of those lying around. Uh, Visualize was a course, an introduction to uh, visual programming and processing. Uh, Project Blinky Pants. Um, we interact with a lot of the burner local Firefly community. They're kind of into what we're doing. Um, so this was a course they really enjoyed. We, we started showing them how to, you know, set up L wire and uh, various LED systems using different boards. Um, Music Response is a course being taught right now. It uh, uses Mix, which is an open source DJ software program. Uh, this has been good for us because now for 50, if you, have, if you own a laptop, $50, um, it's a Linux capable DJ software program that's free. So for very little money, people can actually start getting into DJing. And um, that's been kind of fun. Uh, they're doing a recital at the end of this month at Partisans Asylum on the 30th, so I'm kind of interested to see what they do there. Um, little digital DJing with Tractor. Tractor is a commercial program. Um, and Make Your Own Sound, that's another, pro that's another uh, class being taught by Nathan Lackenmeyer and um, using Cure Data. We also host open jams almost every Saturday at the Asylum for the summertime. We've slowed down a little bit. We now host every other week. And uh, these are ones where musicians and hackers and tinkers and all sorts of folks come down. And, and uh, we have an open audio jam. And it's sort of like an ambient slash whatever. And a bunch of musicians play whatever they're bringing down. And uh, there's a bunch of different other projects that folks work on. And it's been kind of a nice environment just to come into the Asylum, which also, if you aren't familiar, is a beautiful 35,000 square foot awesome space with a machine shop, a welding shop, an electronic shop, uh, and all those resources are available to us. Um, fundraising, we helped raise $5,000 with the Asylum to build a computer lab. Um, we got 10 uh, pretty high spec computers and uh, our recent victory is they, they got SolidWorks Pro on each of those computers. We also have Ableton Light and a suite of open source stuff on there. Um, we're in talks to get the Adobe Master Suite on all of them as well soon. Our new media equipment library, which I think is what makes us stand apart from anything else that's going on, uh, we, we finally got our initial inventory accomplished and there's over 100 pieces of equipment that we've collected so far. Um, again, uh, we have a, there's a 600 square foot room of colored kinetic lights and we have lasers, uh, speakers, DJ equipment, projectors, laptops, computers, etc., etc. So um, all of this stuff will be available to our members in the next month and our library will be available for folks to actually browse and if you have access you can borrow it right online. Uh, the future, things that we're already in talks with, these aren't things we're hoping to do, these are things that are in the works right now. Um, we're building a green screen studio inside the Artisans Asylum classroom. Uh, this will be kind of a neat functional, functional thing. The, one of the gentlemen that's part of that project has a very high-end camera, um, and we're working on having that become sort of an asylum resource. We're starting a monthly gallery event downtown. Um, the thing we hope to separate this from a regular sort of club style event is we will have the main room with dance music just to sort of get the general populace in the door. But then we also have five smaller studios inside the club. And in these five studio rooms, we hope to have interactive installations and uh, new media art going on. Uh, we're actually throwing classes in a, in a club uh, in the financial district uh, or the theater district. And you know, just to give people sort of a real vibe, we'll be throwing our DJ and music performance recitals there. 
Um, and we're collaborating with some local schools and youth groups in Winthrop and Somerville. We'll be starting uh, summer school programs and things that sort of get uh, kids as young as eight years old sort of dabbling in this equipment. Um, so that's SEMI. Uh, we, again, we're a beta organization. We don't really have everything sort of kicked out yet. Um, but in this blurry state, things have been pretty exciting and um, things just seem to keep growing. And for Figment this year, if you're familiar, Figment's an event that's going on um, the last weekend of July. Uh, we're working in conjunction with the automatic subconscious folks and we have a 30-foot dome and we'll be, we have an interactive anyone can jam music station. You, there's, there'll be a bunch of controllers and MIDI drum kits and you can't hit the wrong note. Um, they'll also probably trigger lighting and video. And then at night, uh, we're going to have the inside projection map, 360-degree uh, projection map, and we're, we're aiming to actually have sort of a, a motion-style experience where we get to move or feel like we're moving the auto sub dome around. Uh, that'll be going on Saturday night on the 28th. So, yeah, that's Semi. Thank you very much for your time. Does anyone have any questions or anything? When will you move to my town? <laughs> Where, where's your town? <laughs> Westchester, Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> it's, it's I, just, I love your concept and I wish I'd love to have something like that. Thank you very much. Um, once we feel confident about the beta, we do plan on open sourcing our whole operation manual and uh, hoping people take it off. So um, we'll see what goes on there. Yes. Um, how do I find out about your classes? Is it more good to website? Sure. Well, um, we we're trying to be on top of all forms of social media. So if you go to semi.org, um, all the information is there. You know, sign up. We have a Google group. There's Facebook. Twitter, et cetera, so we, we try to blast everything as often as we can with what's going on, um, but the mailing list is, you know, the least that you can get on, and that'll keep you from having to sign up constantly. Yes? Yeah, the intro to DSD and your data class, I'm actually teaching that class, so if anybody's interested or curious about what the data is, come talk to me. Don't the here. Thank you. All right, well, thank you guys for your time. Appreciate it.